Life Audio. Hi, friends. Welcome to Breathe, the Stress Less Podcast. I'm Bonnie Gray, your soul care mentor for this time that's designed just for you. We want to pause, we want to relax, we want to breathe in God's love, His peace, we want to exhale our stress, and we want to pick up a simple soul care tip. I'm going to share with you a simple action you can take at any time to restore calm to your emotions and your body. So whether you are just starting your day, maybe you're taking a break in the middle or on your commute. Or perhaps it's the evening for you after a long day. I just want to welcome you. Thank you for being here. Please come as you are. Come and relax and let's just enjoy spending time together. And that's a gift, isn't it? That's a gift we can give ourselves. So thank you for giving me that gift of being here that I can help you relax and to come as you are. It's related to our topic today. I'm going to ask you a question. So I want to ask you about Christmas because there is a survey that the APA takes. APA stands for American Psychological Association. They take a survey every year going into the holidays. And it's really good because you get an insight into what everybody else is experiencing that are stressors. And this is really important for emotional health is that we are able to not ignore the things that burden us because as God's beloved daughters, we can release them we can be accepted, we can be loved, and we don't have to hide. And that's such a big part of emotional wellness. Well, okay, so I'm going to read out four different stressors. I want to ask you which one you identify with. And we're going to tackle one of them today, but I want to ask you which one is kind of your stressor as you think about stepping into the Christmas season right now. First is financial concerns budgeting for gifts and traveling and spending during the holidays. Second is time management and commitments, balancing social events, family gatherings, kind of, I feel like those logistics of commitments and time, right? Third is family dynamics, interactions with family members, especially in situations involving conflict, differing opinions and strained relationships that contribute to stress. That's third. Fourth is the pressure to maintain cheerfulness. Isn't it surprising? It's on there. There's expectations for us to feel joyful and festive during the holidays, even when we are dealing with personal challenges or difficulties. That can add to the emotional overwhelm. There's emotional strain. So which one are you feeling as you're stepping in to Christmas this year? Well, we're going to tackle the pressure to maintain cheerfulness. That one really surprised me. And so I said, I want to tackle that one because I also had a survey when my book, Sweet Like Jasmine, came out, Finding Identity in a Culture of Loneliness. It won the Christian Book Award finalist position. And I'm really thankful because this book is about exploring your true worth as a woman of faith. And so when I released that book, I did a book club and I asked to win I did a little survey myself. I asked, what stresses you out during Christmas? And here are the three buckets. And it's related. I, I think it was pretty accurate, you know, comparing with the APA results. One is that people wanted to do less. There are too much, too many things to do. And second is toxic people, people in your families that, just really stress you out. And third is expectations, expectations from how to manage them, especially when you want to change how you've been doing Christmas, your different season of life. The third was big one was expectations. And fourth was about everybody agreed as a woman of faith. They Everybody wanted more of Jesus. Looking back on Christmas, a lot of women felt It seemed like I got a lot done for the holidays, but I didn't have enough Jesus. I missed out on the Jesus. So we're going to talk about the Jesus part today. And next week, as we step into Advent, we're going to be talking about toxic relationships. I know, I hope I've got you intrigued because 
what does Advent have to do with toxic relationships? But it's actually one of the top stressors, isn't it, for holidays? We just found that out. So you're not alone. We're all in it together. And so I'm going to help you breathe in God's love, exhale your stress. And when we come back from our sponsor, or we're from our sponsor, we're going to tackle about the emotional health and how to have more of Jesus stepping into the holidays. And I'm so glad you're here so I can empower you, encourage you, and lift you up. We'll be right back. Providing for your family is a top priority. But what happens when you need affordable health care? Christian Healthcare Ministries could save you up to 40% today. As a member, you can choose your provider without network restrictions. Sign up at your convenience with our anytime enrollment. Join a Christian community that supports each other's medical expenses, offering peace of mind as you prioritize what's most important. Enroll now at yourchm.org. Well, friends, we're back, and I want to encourage you to get a copy of Sweet Light Jasmine, Finding Identity in a Culture of Loneliness. It's really about how can we feel God's love in our story. You know, a lot of times as Christian women, we kind of try to fit ourselves in a cookie cutter type form, and we kind of look at maybe what other people might consider a faith-filled woman, and we look at our own stories, we're like, okay, how can I make my story more like hers? But in fact, God is most beautiful and his love and his peace is most beautiful showing up in your story. And we need your story. We need you. We don't want all these cookie cutter women of faith. We want you. So every chapter explores a different aspect of our worth as a woman. And it's something I had to go through as I had to try to find peace in many different broken parts of my story. I kind of like swept them under the rug I've actually, as a writer, I identify more with the metaphor of, I kind of just tried to erase them and (laughs) write new chapters. And yet God beautifully showed me through different areas of uh, being his beloved daughter that as women of faith, we don't want to do that. God wants to show us the beauty and our true worth. So why don't you pick up copy because right now it's on sale for the holiday season for $5.95. My goodness, friends, if you get a soy latte at Starbucks and it's a tall Hey, that's the same cause as this book. And I am so excited for you to pick up this book. It's it's written so that you can explore your stories with other women in the new year. If you're into book clubs or small groups, it's really good because as women, we tend to talk about what we're learning from scripture, which is important, but we miss out on sharing who we are. So I know some women, they've been to Bible studies for years, but they have no idea what somebody's story is. So this book is really fun and exciting to do together. Um, The second thing I want to share with you is that I want you to pick up a copy of my book, Breathe. In fact, if it's something you're inspired to get a packet of my books as Christmas gifts, these are all about faith and wellness. And you have made Breathe 21 Days to Stress Less and Transform Chaos to Calm, the number one book that was released in the summer in audiobook and in Kindle, and it's become an ECPA bestseller hit. ECPA stands for Evangelical Christian Publishers Association. I am not shy about encouraging you to pick up this book because this is life lessons learned over a decade of healing from severe anxiety, panic attacks, and even depression. I always say, hey, I am such a very severe case that God showing me through soul care can bring me healing in my body, my wellness, my emotions, my social wellness, and my emotional, spiritual wellness. I know that this, having done soul care for decades and helping many communities and women, this will help you as well. And you'll enjoy it. It's a lot of fun, just like our podcast. And then there's Whispers of Rest, which is a 40-day devotional, which started this podcast. Yes, it did. It's about soul care and then finding spiritual white space. So thank you for allowing me to introduce those books to you, and I hope you pick them up for Christmas and give them to your friends. It's so important that we encourage each other as women to prioritize our wellness. Now, do you happen to be in the East Coast, in Maryland, near Maryland, somewhere around the Northeast? Because I'm going to be speaking at Faith 
Filth Women's Conference in 2024 in March, March 23. I know it's a little early, but I just want to plant the seed in case you live around the area. I would love to see you. There's going to be 800 women at the Faith Filth Women's Conference. I am the keynote speaker. I'll be actually leading a soul care rest retreat for the whole day. It's going to be such a treat, so exciting. So I want you to look at the show notes and I want you to sign up if you are near there because I don't want you to miss out. It's going to be incredible and exciting. Okay, so we are talking about Christmas stress. You know, one thing that a lot of these have in common, these stressors, is that we're pulled apart during Christmas season. That's really one way that I see it as a soul care mentor is that we're pulled apart. There's different parts of us that are being pulled in different directions. We're doing too much. There's toxic people that have very hard expectations for us. We have expectations for ourselves and we are left without this nurturing part of our soul being tended to. And Christmas really is about making room for Jesus as one of faith, really what really lights us up and gives us peace is the ability to really experience God in a new way and find him in our story and to find ourselves in Jesus's story. So a lot of this really is about opening your heart, nurturing yourself. And I'm going to share something that's pretty special, I feel, about Jesus, because it brings me back to this experience I had recently One of the first principles of soul care is that we don't try to think our way out of stress because that activates our fight, flight, freeze response. Our body will release more cortisol. When we try to focus on how do I solve this, you know, toxic relationship problem or how do I try to fit all these things into this next four weeks or how do I deal with this expectation on logistics or you fill in the blank. All it does is increase more stress and cortisol. So what we want to do is focus on nurturing your soul because when you are refilled, when you have peace or joy, doing something nourishing for yourself, you will start to relax. Your heart will open up to experience God's whisper, to feel his touch and to let that little child within you, the little girl in you to be able to be amazed in wonder and awe at the beauty There's so much in Christmas that's beautiful. And so we want to help focus on that little girl in you. We want to give her permission because Jesus said that the greatest in the kingdom of God is having the faith of a child. So I want you to look at Christmas this way. As you prepare and plan from being inspired in today's podcast, I want you to focus on listening to her because that child is within you. And that is the child that Jesus wants to reach. Scripture in the New Testament always refers to us as a child of God, and we are his daughter. We're his blessed daughters. So I want you to think about what she would want this Christmas. And it's so interesting because Jesus is very protective of that little child. You know, there's a story that Jesus tells about the one sheep that Jesus goes and finds as a shepherd. He leaves a 99 to find that one lost sheep. And so if you are in a season right now, like I had been, and of course, every year there's something different, if there's stress and anxiety, those things kind of grip us and they cause us to feel lost. We have a sense of loss of direction. Again, on the outside, it looks like we're getting a lot done for the holidays. We're doing everything that maybe everybody expects us to do. But God looks at the child within you and God sees that little child that's lost because without peace and joy and beauty and comfort, many of us might be grieving during this holiday season of loss of memories, or maybe many of us are in transitions. We are looking to change, change towards new rhythms, new people perhaps that God wants us to draw us to or new places our new practices. And so that is an invitation to the child within you, the child within you. So one of the key things that is a kind of a handshake with nurturing your soul is that you want to have experiences. 
You want to lower stress and anxiety by inserting experiences in your schedule and in your story that will bring you peace, joy, or beauty. So I want to ask you, when I ask you, what is a memory you have of something that brought you joy as a little girl? Now, one of the things for me, because those of you have been with me on a journey or you've read my books, know that I didn't have a happy childhood. So I didn't really have any memories to draw upon. But because God is our Heavenly Father, He's constantly rewriting our stories. There's something that I never got to do. I never got to build gingerbread houses. I always hear about them. I see them in churches with the children's program. When I was little, we didn't really have such a robust children's ministry, so we never built those. But last year, Marianne, a friend of ours, dropped by, and she came with two gingerbread houses. And it was so funny because she had three of them. So Josh and Caleb, they're teenagers. They're 14 and 17. They worked on one each. And then Eric and I, we worked on one. And it was so interesting. I love that they were small, too. They were smaller ones. So they were done real quickly, but it was so fun. We are, ended up eating a lot of candy. Time passed by so quickly. It was such a wonderful memory. And the little girl in me had so much fun. I tell this story because it's never too late to experience joy. It's never too late to be a child again in God's loving arms. So this Christmas, I want to ask the little girl, the child in you, my sister in Christ, what is that Christmas experience that brings joy to you this season? And this is important because I start out saying that one of the APA, the survey they found is that cause stress is feeling forced to feel cheerful during the holidays when you're not. So maybe for you this season, the child in you needs comfort. The child in you needs peace. The child in you needs grace. The child in you needs something quiet and soothing. And that's great. That's so important for us to listen because God is the God of comfort, isn't he? He's the Prince of Peace. Handel's Messiah sings, Almighty God, he's the Prince of Peace. Isn't that right? So this season, if I were to ask you to Create a season where you can have more of what you want and need your soul. What would that be? So I want to give you some words I want you to choose. Peace, comfort, joy, beauty, hope. You see what I did there? Those are the words of Advent. We're going to be stepping through that. I'm going to be stepping through the Advent with my Soul Care School sisters. And I want you to get ready to sign up for Soul Care School in January. I'm starting a new quarter and we're going to do Finding Joy with Jesus. Happy, healthy habits. Creating happy, healthy habits for the New Year's. I want you to get ready. I'm planting that seed. I want you to sign up. I don't want you to hesitate because so much of lowering stress and anxiety is taking action towards doing what can help lower cortisol and release those good hormones God put in our bodies. And so, It helps so much to have a community, to have that encouragement. So for Christmas, I want to ask you with those words, what would your word be for Christmas? What would that be? And I want you to focus on a mindful way to celebrate that word, even if it's comfort, even if it's beauty. And I'm going to end with four different ways, different ideas that I want you to get inspired by. It's just going to help you brainstorm some ideas because I want you in the coming week before we enter into Christmas, we have four weeks, I want you to put it in your schedule. And that is a practical way that you are going to be able to experience God this Christmas. Providing for your family is a top priority. But what happens when you need affordable health care? Christian Healthcare Ministries could save you up to 40% today. As a member, you can choose your provider without network restrictions. Sign up at your convenience with our anytime enrollment. Join a Christian community that supports each other's medical expenses, offering peace of mind as you prioritize what's most important. 
Enroll now at yourchm.org. Oh, friend, I am so happy that we get to step into God's story right now. You know, this might seem like a odd place to step into the story for Christmas, but it's a beautiful, powerful biblical principle, a soul care strategy that we can find in Jesus' story. There was a man, he was blind. And the scriptures tell us in Mark chapter 8, when they arrived at Bethsaida, some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. So he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. Then he spit on the man's eyes and placed his hands on him. Can you see anything? He asked. Jesus asked him that. Can you see anything? The man looked up and said, I can see the people, but they look like trees walking around. Once again, Jesus placed his hands on the man's eyes. And when he opened them, his sight was restored and he could see everything clearly. I just want to point out two biblical principles here for soul care strategies. One is that Jesus took this man by the hand and led him out of the village. Whatever you do that's going to feed your soul, as your soul care mentor, I know it's going to take you out of the village. It's going to take you to an experience that is just delightful for you. And that's a challenge, isn't it? Because many of us might feel guilty or selfish, but that is how Jesus touches your heart and soul. He takes you for a personal experience. So what would that be? That's one quality of soul care. So you're given permission now for Christmas to do something that takes you away from might be the village for you so that you can have a personal experience with Jesus where he can touch you, touch your heart. The second principle, Jesus asked this man, can you see anything? We know that Jesus is omniscient, right? God is omniscient. He knows that the man can't really see everything right then and there. And yet Jesus was very interested because the man said, I can see the people, but they look like trees walking around. You know, healing takes time, rebuilding our lives, making changes, walking through transitions. It's kind of a messy experience. And Christmas kind of accentuates those messinesses. I know it's not a word, but that's just how it appears to me. It's kind of the messiness is kind of get illuminated, right, during the holidays. But remember, Jesus is by your side. He knows what you're seeing, and it's not exactly the thing that could be the end point of his healing for you. And it takes time. It takes time, whether you're going through job transition, life transition, grief, or something exciting, something you're looking forward to in the new year, but you're just right in the middle of it. And so we need to be able to share with Jesus, share with Jesus, what is it that you're seeing? It's so important. And so some of us need to also share that with other people because Jesus, his Holy Spirit is in each of us. So we need to connect with others during the Christmas time. So that's the second thing I want you to do. I want you to make time, whether it's for brunch or breakfast or coffee or tea time or a walk or crocheting together. I don't know what it is. I want you to spend time, make an appointment during your Christmas weeks, especially when you know something stressful is going to happen. There might be a family gathering. There might be a phone call that's going to be stressful because you need to draw some boundaries, or maybe you just need to change how you're doing holidays. Make sure you have a friend you're going to go out to spend time with either before or after the difficult conversation. And that is going to help you to be more resilient to stress and to fill your tank. So those are kind of the two soul care strategies I have for you that's based on scripture today. One, again, is you need to do something that's just for you outside of the village that just delights you with peace and joy, hope or comfort or beauty. Okay. And second, I want you to schedule time that you will enjoy with someone that you really enjoy being with. Okay. And to talk about everything either before or after things that are stressful. Okay. So here are some soul care ideas. Soul care ideas. Now, before we do that, we want to breathe in our breath prayer. Our breath prayer comes to us from a powerful scripture, James 4, 8. 
draw near to God and he will draw near to you. So inhale, draw near to God. Exhale, he will draw near to you. Inhale, draw near to God. Exhale, he will draw near to you. So friend, whatever helps you to draw near, let this breath prayer remind you to draw near to God in the way that feels peaceful for you. Now, here we are now with the soul care tips. I have five soul care tips for you. Each of them represent the five senses because in wellness, whenever we can activate our senses, our five senses, it lowers stress. It stops your mind from overthinking and it helps you to be present and it helps you to release those serotonin hormones, good feeling hormones or dopamine, and that's the motivation hormone. So I'm going to give you five, and these will just help spark some ideas. Okay, spark some ideas. But if you don't have another idea, I want to challenge you to actually do one of these, even if they're not your usual go-tos. And that's what we're also doing in Soul Care School, because you know, when we are kind of stuck in our own patterns, it helps us when we have a friend or a mentor or other people that we're all just trying new things. Isn't it true? That helps it make it so much more fun. Okay. The first one is to activate your auditory sense. Listen to some music. I want you to create a playlist for Christmas music that I want you to listen to. Second, if this is your thing, this is your love language, I want you to find a concert that you can attend and listen to and I want to gently say, I want you to go without your kids. I want this to be your night out. Remember leaving the village and experiencing that evening for yourself. Second idea. Oh, and I do want to say, because science shows that when you listen to music, it is a stress reliever. This is a proven, a proven top stress releaser is music. Just listening to music is going to release this serotonin in your brain. The second is your visual sensory. And so I want you to, if this is what you would like to choose, I want you to take some time out in your schedule and I want you to go and if it's your favorite place, maybe there's where the Christmas tree is, you can go for a walk. The second is you can work on a photo book, something just for you, your favorite memories from within this year. Studies show whether a walk or putting photos together as you're looking at them, you recall good memories, they release serotonin as well. Okay. The third is tactile. This is the gingerbread house I talked about, right? The gingerbread house talked about maybe you want to buy a packet and you can go bring it to a friend just like my friend did for me. And we worked on it together and it was so fun. That could be yours, the tactile. The fourth is taste. Now this one is peppermint tea. Peppermint tea has been known to release stress and help relieve pain. If you have chronic pain, it just helps you to relax. It promotes relief of pain. And then also perhaps you can do some baking if that is your thing. There is the cooking therapy, not cooking for chores, but cooking the things or baking using your hands. So that's taste. The fifth is smell. So Get some candles as we prepare for the Advent season. Get some candles that has some nice fragrance as aromatherapy. I love eucalyptus. That's a really wonderful fragrance. And last, I want to talk about these shower steamers. They are one of the my most favorite gifts to give away and really want to invite you to get some shower steamers for yourself. I have a favorite brand called Body Restore. And it's in the holiday favorite things, soul care list. Go to the show notes and you'll be able to see, I picked 43 different of my favorite gifts that I've received or I've given away for gifts throughout the years that help with soul care. And so this is like number one, as of right now for Black Friday weekend, they are having a Black Friday Amazon sale. So please pick it up. I love to even like throw three or four of them and give a tin of peppermint tea That's been a favorite gift, as well as a book, my Breathe book. And that's been a wonderful gift that people always love. You know, it's activating all senses, taste, your soul, journaling, reading, God's word. 
and then you have these shower steamers. This is helping you breathe. Studies show that when you take showers and specifically hot showers, it really helps relieve stress and help lower anxiety. So I am just doing everything that I can to help empower you and refill your soul so you can step into this holiday period to experience God's peace and presence. So go to those show notes, look at the holiday soul care store. And as you make purchases, it helps provide support for this ministry, the Breathe Community Ministry. So thank you so much. And last but not least, I would love to pray. Lord Jesus, thank you. We love being able to pause and be reminded of your peace, that no matter what storms may be swirling around us, you immediately reach out your hand. You immediately lift us up. You would never allow us to sink beyond where we feel so discouraged that we cannot be rescued by you. Lord Jesus, thank you that you never tire of holding us up. You never tire inviting us into your presence Lord, I pray for the one who is listening, who needs your touch of peace, your touch of comfort. Remind her of all the ways you have comforted her, taking care of her, and remind her of your promise that you will be faithful to carry her today, tomorrow, and wherever she finds herself, because you are the shepherd of her soul. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Fran, thank you so much for spending this time. I'm so excited to walk into the Christmas season with you. I'm so grateful for you. Remember to pick up my books as Christmas gifts. It's a wonderful way to bless your friends with soul care. It's so important that remind each other that we're not just made to do things for God. In fact, God wants us to receive us to receive his love and peace and joy because he is a flowing river. The Holy Spirit is a river a living water within us that replenishes with the word that falls from the heavens and flows out to others and waters the seed. So friends, thank you so much. I can't wait to see you next time. Remember you're loved, you're cherished. Just rest. I'll see you next time. Breathe, the Stress Less podcast is a production of Life Audio and Salem Media. If you liked what you heard today, please take a second to rate and review this podcast in your favorite podcast app so that more listeners like you can find the show. For more faith-filled, inspirational podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com. What do you do when your world is falling apart? How do you march when it would be easier to stay where you are and die? Join me every week on the March or Die podcast, and we'll discuss that and so much more.